man up, dude. There we go. Wes. Hey, Paul. So, uh, the L1 deal is closing and partners are flying into San Francisco. Okay. I hate to do this to you, but you're the only one I trust with this client. I need you out there. Okay. Look, Wes, man to man. <laughs> you gonna be able to handle this? Yes, why wouldn't I? I have a good handle on the account. We'll be fine, Paul. We'll be fine. Good. Hi, honey. Make sure you pick up some cured meats, and we're low on diapers. Oh, and I need tampons too. Go to Whole Foods for the meats. Don't go to Giant, so you'll have to make two stops. Uh, you know what? You might just getting everything for the week. I'll, I'll text you the list. Sweetie, sorry, I forgot to add something to the list. Do you mind? Did you leave already? I did. Yeah. What is it? So my father just reminded me he needs his toilet paper. Speaking of, they're hungry, and I want to try to put Lizzie down before my sister and Andy show up, so I'm just going to serve everyone. But I have your plate ready. I'll keep it covered, okay? Okay. I'll take care of it. Where's your oh, yes. <laughs> I'm not going out like that. No, I'm not going out. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. We wanted to wait for you, but we were starving. You did remember the diapers, did you? Yep. Oh, I think I left them in the car. I'll get them. This is at one place, is it? Uh, you've got to do something about that uh, dishwasher. You just crapped out. Luke, leave a message. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Hey, man. I don't know why I've had so much trouble reaching you for the past month. Maybe you've been arrested? Kidnapped? Maybe you're dead? I don't really give a fuck. You should call me back. But hopefully you were out there in that cesspool of silicone serving up manhood in a more efficient manner than I am here in suburbia, where I am house dad to not only my wife and kid, but also my in-laws, one of whom just told me I need to get a bigger fucking house so that he has more bathrooms to shit in and more room to put his feet up. Anyway, I won't be mad about the hiding if you show up at this reunion, okay? I've been drinking. Bye. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Yeah, you're tired. How I wonder what you are. It's eczema, not a skin rash. Make sure you tell the doctor. Fuck, is this what I think it is? His ass? Yeah. Great, thank you, honey. Can't unsee that. Oh. And here's the bill from last time that needs to be paid. Make sure they don't overcharge you. God damn! A thousand dollars? To treat skin on an old man's ass? What do you want me to say? 
It's my dad. All right. Oh, shit. Wes? Mm-hmm. Look at me. Hmm? I'm ovulating. Okay. Take your pants off. Wait. Okay. No, Does that hurt? No, it's... It, it's good. It's fine. Okay. Just go ahead. Bye. Okay. Can't complain. Uh, still in Philly, working. Very nice. My wife and I just had a little one. Congrats, man. Yeah, baby boy. That's great. Yeah, thanks. It's... Yeah. How about, how about you? I heard you and uh, Sarah Joyce ended up getting married. We did. I could have said that would happen. You two, you always had a Ken and Barbie thing going on. <laughs> Here's your drink, darling. Thank you, my dearest. Mm. Who'd have thought I could be so thoughtful? No, seriously. Mm. What did you do with my wife? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'll let you know if I find her. Thank you so much. She has my credit card. So. <laughs> Is that Maggie Olson? It is. Is she coming over here? I wish Luke was here. How much did you pay for those tickets? This is gonna be interesting. Hi, Sarah. Hey, Wes. Hey, Maggie. Maggie, you look beautiful. Thank you. I, I hear you guys got married. We did. Got married seven years ago. Mm -hmm. Not that anyone's counting. No. No. Feels He's... like yesterday. Yeah. He's still that angry old man baby that I just tolerate, so not much has changed. <laughs> What about you? No, not married. Still single. Got it. Where are you now? I live up in Portland, Oregon. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, I really love it. What are you doing up there? I'm a painter, which means I spend most of my time bartending. Hey. Beats my concrete jungle. <laughs> um, is Luke here? No, he didn't make it. It's too bad. Tell him I said hello. I'm gonna take a couple days off on either side of the meeting. Get out west early. You have nothing to worry about, 
Okay, nothing's gonna jeopardize the deal. I just need some time. Why don't we try this? I'll, uh, I'll ramp right before his first chorus line on the beat, and then we'll uh, intercut that motif through the rest of the chorus. Yeah, watch. <laughs> The fucking genius! You did that in your sleep like a fucking Jedi. Why can't Harold do that? Well, you better get Harold to shape up. Because we can't afford to keep asking Luke to save the day from his apartment. Speaking of Luke. So, we are over budget again. But we can still pay you. It's just a fraction of the rate for the hours we've put in. I'm sorry. You know what? Don't worry about it. Uh, I'll just uh, consider it my goodbye present. What you talking about? I'll keep a spot open for you in case you change your mind in the last minute. Change your mind about what? Wes. Okay, we should go. Yeah, we're gonna project all these wacky beams of light in all different directions, like green, purple, yellow, orange, red, like a prism, you know? Cool. Yeah, sure, right? I'm gonna put Beyonce in a Trans Am, so it'll be like Beyonce meets Knight Rider meets Dark Side of the Moon. Mm -hmm. Are you at CIA? No. Nope. So I'll, I'll call you. Come here, buddy. What the fuck are you doing here, Wes? You don't answer your goddamn phone, so I'm taking matters into my own hands. It's a nice spot. About 700 square feet. Wes, what the fuck is going on? She's in Portland. What? Who? Maggie. <laughs> What's Maggie who? You're Maggie. My, my Maggie. Yeah, so guess what? We're going to Portland. <laughs> what? Yep. We're gonna drive up to Portland, and we're gonna go see Maggie. Well, you're gonna go see Maggie. And I'm just gonna right, stand to the side, happily, in the bushes or something. You're out of your fucking mind. She was at the reunion and she was asking about you. She was, she was asking about me. And I'm telling you, it felt like the sole reason she was there was to see you. And I've got business up in San Francisco. We'll kill two birds with one stone. And where are you going? I'm showering. I'm hungry. Hurry up. Come down. Thank you for getting my luggage. Very helpful after a long flight. You realize how long of a drive it is to Portland? Yeah, it's 570 miles from the Santa Monica Pier to Leggett. That's 15 hours of driving. I figure we cut in at Lincoln City. Then from Leggett to Portland is 520 miles, 11 hours of driving. So what? We're talking 1,100 miles, 26 hours of driving. Even if we do manage to get there, how do we even find her? Well, I've done some digging. She works in this cool place off of Belmont. I know where she lives, too. You're trying to scare me. <laughs> you have wife clearance for this? <clears throat> yeah, Sarah's totally fine with it. All right. Speaking of, how is Sarah? Uh, oh, Lizzie. Oh, come on. What else do you have to do? You can't move home. What the fuck are you gonna do in Richmond? Well, uh, my brother got me a sales job. No. Waste disposal. No. Recycling. Still no. Are you kidding me? That is not a solution. I'm not letting you do that. You, you reach a certain age, and being broke is just is a bad luck. It, it gets old, trailing behind everyone else. Since when do you care about everyone else? Listen, whenever I get frustrated with my own life, I think about you. I do. Out here living for us all. That's just the truth, man. Can you handle that? You can stay at my place until your meeting. I'll take you out here in L.A. every night. We'll have a blast. But I'm not going to Portland. Like the first part, hate the second part. We'll go to Portland. Oh! I ought to grow out my beard on this trip. 
This fucking thick beard. That's what these LA chicks like, right? Buy a flannel. God knows I walk into some place with a blazer lately from their fucking dad. But I ditch the blazer, buy a flannel, grow out my nice thick beard, and I'll look just like the rest of these dirty idiots with their flannels and beards. <laughs> what? Your little Bukowski shtick seems to be working out just fine. Come on, you've got more ass out here than you ever did in college by a multiple of 100. Yeah, okay, who cares? I'm done. What's that mean? Um, I'm taking a break from women. Uh, what? Lucky wouldn't understand. No, I can't say I wouldn't understand. There's absolutely nothing about a good-looking single guy in L.A. taking some vow of celibacy makes any sense to me whatsoever. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm tired. What? I haven't had sex with a girl in six months, and quite frankly, I haven't wanted to. What is going on here? What have you done with my friend Luke? Huh? You don't return calls, I buy you a ticket, you don't fly out. What's the deal? Okay, well, you're not here, you don't know what it's like, and uh, sorry, I'm sorry about the ticket. No, fuck the ticket, I just want to know what's going on. I'm fine. Wow, look at that. Look at this jewel. Her Cali right there. Oh, man. You know, being here in this moment, it just makes me really, really happy that places like this still exist. <laughs> what? <laughs> Bam, my little dreamer. <laughs> you know, I really like you. I did. And you're just such an asshole. You're such an asshole. Um, you're so mean to me. I wasn't mean to you. Yeah, you were. I, I thought you were a nice guy, but you just ended up being the jerk. Makes a lot of sense. You ended up being the jerk. I totally get that, and I'm sorry. Do you just want to go home? All right, now we're going home. Do you want to go? It's time to go. No, 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 no. I'm just going to stay right here. I'll, 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 I'll catch you later. I'm going to be over here. Yeah, I'll be over catch here. you later. OK. I just, OK. Oh, wow. Luke, what did you do to that poor woman? No, I didn't do anything. Okay, we were kind of hooking up for a while, and one night she just starts crying randomly for no reason. I couldn't get it out of her. She wasn't even drunk. And then later that night, I was sleeping, and she, she tried to stick a finger on me. No. Right. Might have done it for me. Of course it would. <laughs> so now I'm the asshole, and me, asshole, forever. Uh oh. Look at this. Come on, you can't leave her like that. Uh, your, your breath from the, what? the vomit. So fucking typical of the city. Look, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're a fucking loser. Hey, hey, hey. Just take it easy, all right? Hey, I took care of no, you all night. You're nobody. It's no wonder why you're 30-something alone in a one-bedroom guest house with nobody but a fucking douchebag in a fucking robe. You know, I just feel bad for guys like you because you'll never have the capacity to get your shit together to bring somebody in. 
But you know what? I'll uh, I'll consider the source. Thank you. Oh my god, that is such a fucking cliche. A 30-something-year-old dreamer equals a fucking loser. Loser. Fuck. Fuck. I just think it's time I settle into something elsewhere. Luke, no. That black hole, or whatever that shit was in there, that's why we gotta go to Portland. Will you stop with the Maggie stuff, please? No, Luke, I get it now. I do. Your career right now, it sucks. I see that. You're not happy. You haven't accomplished what you want, and that sucks. But you just need some positive momentum. And if you get your ass of that PCH with me, yes, that's that one step. That's that one fucking step in the right direction. And I promise you, the momentum's gonna start to turn in your favor. Okay. Fuck yeah. Pack your shit. We leave in an hour. Pack your shit. Uh, where, where are you going? Bring a jacket. Bring something nice, please. <laughs> Close your eyes and sniff. What do you smell? I smell ocean air, maybe a little beer. Yeah. Or some dog shit. A little bit, yeah. Now, is that is that strawberry lotion? <laughs> I've always been a sick fuck. What, man? We're back. We're here, right? Oh, hey, hey, hey. Oh, she's looking at you. Did you learn nothing last night? No, this is different. More wholesome. Say something. First thing that pops into your head. Go, go, go. Hey. Um, do you know where we could get some uh, some smoothies around here? Smoothies? Um, yeah. Yeah, there's a smoothie place called Blenders back on Pardell. Cool. Great. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. Oh, whoa. No, thanks. Never touch the stuff. Wow, never? I don't do mellow. I'm a grown man. I drink scotch. Bullshit, that's not the reason. What? It's because when he used to smoke back in college, he'd turn into this paranoid mess. No, that is not true. I once had to cradle him. He thought he was an orange, <laughs> and he was afraid he was going to get peeled. <laughs> that, the orange incident did happen. Well, uh, you'll just have to fare with the boxed wine in the fridge. Of course you have boxed wine, because you're a classy lady. Yes, thank you. Excuse me? You, know, you don't have to be afraid of me. I don't bite. Sold. I'm gonna smoke a little ganj. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, it says refreshing on the box. This is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> very cool, Snoop. You should take a rip and just go be paranoid in the corner. <laughs> yeah, what's your deal, Wes? You look like a very slick banker guy. Are you from New York? Close, DC area. 
I bet your closet's full of Brooks Brothers. No, 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 no. Brooks Brothers is entry level shit. Most of my shirts are from Geneva. Oh. Just the supple cotton is better for my <laughs> chest hairs. All four of them. Wes makes a lot of money in venture capital. Eh, I make a lot of money being super boring. And what do you do? You work at Smoothie King? Uh, well, um, Luke edits music videos in LA. Oh, wow. That's yeah. so cool. cool. He is not super boring. Well, you know, my mom always says that you can't make a life unless you do what makes you happy. God bless your mother. I'm guessing she's a super hot yogi milf. She sure is. I knew I was right. <laughs> so, what's in Portland? Good question, Constance. I'll answer it. I happen to have run into one of Luke's college pals, and she inspired this little journey up the coast. There's a girl up in Portland, and you guys are going to see her? Wasn't an old college girlfriend. It's a love quest. No, it's not a love quest. It's a love quest! It's a fucking love quest. It is. Yeah, I highly doubt that. Yeah, don't pay too much attention. This guy over here is probably already in love with you. And, fun fact, he's gonna kill me for saying this, but Luke here has the largest collection of romantic films this side of the Mississippi. I caught him on multiple occasions jerking off to Notting Hill in college. Hugh <laughs> Grant, sexy. You, can, you can't unsee that. Well, that is adorable. <laughs> is it VHS or Laserdisc? It's a poster. <laughs> <laughs> You two have fun. Yeah, you two have fun. Not too much fun. <laughs> so, did I do my job this evening? Yes, you did. You have earned your free ride. I literally have chills right now. I told you, it's magical. I just want to look at this and remember it. Okay, we're good. Mental snapshot in my brain forever. Hey, what's it like being married to someone you met when you were 19? Those kind of old fashioned these days. That's me. It's an old 60s Chevy. <laughs> yeah, the Bronco suits you better. When you're young, your heart is so big. It's just bracing to let in every opportunity, every feeling, everything. But you don't really know who you are at 19. I mean, don't you love getting to be creative all day? Plus, why go and leave all this behind? What, should I come live with you? You do that? Sure, why not? I can totally see myself with you. Oh, yeah? So you just dive in with some enchanting college girl you met like 12 hours ago? You, me, here. I can paint any beautiful delusion for our future. See? You really are romantic.
What the fuck? Mm, what's going on, baby? Hey, guys, this is Charlie and Seth. Hello, Charlie. What's up, brothers? Thanks for giving the goddesses a ride. Sure, yeah. Needs an Uber. Yeah. You guys should uh, come with us. We're going to grill some fresh ahi, smoke some green grasses. Gonna camp out. Join us. Yeah, no. Uh, thank you. Yeah, we'll uh, take a rain check on the tuna. Gotta get going. Okay. Chill. Well, safe journey. Very great to meet you, bros. Prosper. Likewise. Hey, if you brothers change your mind, you know? We got extra tents and good vibes. Ganja. Goddesses. Yeah, I don't think we will. Yeah, unlikely, but thank you for the, uh, for the offer. Nice to meet you, dudes. Mm hmm Absolutely. Yep, thank you. Pleasure. <laughs> what? Uh, I don't know. Don't you think a little heads up would have been in order? No, why? I'm not his property. I'm no one's. And everyone's. Through me. That doesn't mean anything. I just listen to my energy and I follow it, Luke. Don't do anything else. Do you? I'll keep that in mind. Dipshits and the German sociopath. You had fun, I could see it on your face. I guess I just thought we were destined to run off into the sunset or something. Until Bodie from the point break showed up. Oh, well, whatever. We had fun. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Uh, nothing should surprise me. I feel renewed. Do you? You look renewed. I invite you to join me on this side of a good mood. Give me a minute, I'll be right there. <laughs> <laughs> How many necklaces does that guy have on? Monday. For what? For the chance to go sell trash in Richmond? I just, I gotta do this. You're meant to go to Portland. <sighs> All right. You sink that pot, I'll stay. Game on.
home. That's it, I guess. What's wrong? What do you mean? I can tell by the tone in your voice something's wrong. What's wrong? Who's this guy I'm working with? Can't really talk specifics, but I think he's making a big mistake. Can you get him to change his mind? I'm trying, but he's a stubborn one. Well, you've been known to have the power of persuasion. Yeah, well. We'll see. I gotta get going. Kiss Lizzie for me, and I love you. Love you. Bye. You really would have stayed if I'd made that putt? You'll never know. Oh, God. You know what this night needs, Luke? More company. Oh, come on, Wes. It's our last night. Just, let's just hang together. No. Ladies, how's the wine? Not bad. Can't complain. Yeah, you, uh, you visiting from out of town? No, I live here in Carmel. She's in town visiting from Berkeley. Cool. I'm Wes. Rebecca. Ellen. Very good to meet you. I don't mean to be a creep, but do you see this scruffy guy over here? Mm-hmm. This guy is a dear friend of mine, a, a, troubled, a troubled man. And um, here's the deal. Here's what I think we should do. The four of us should go to dinner, some good food, some adult conversations, a couple drinks, maybe several drinks. Just take some time to remind ourselves of life's joys. And in so doing, we can help this poor sad sack over here realize that he's making the biggest mistake of his entire life. Please. Well, maybe Ouch. he's not as hopeless as you say he is. Maybe he's just searching for something more. Maybe he hasn't found the one. Maybe she's in Portland. Mm. There we go. What does that even mean, the one? No. I at this point in life, I think it's more a matter of practicality. I've given up on this notion that somehow I'll just run into someone and know that she's the one. And that's that's fine. That's totally fine with me. Seems a little defeatist to me. Agree. No, it's, it's just not worth it anymore. It's not. Dating to eventually find the right one. How is that not worth it? OK, so. Um, Take Ellen and I, for example. We could totally go back to some hotel room and um, sleep together. Mm. Mm. <laughs> but come morning, either of us could wake up feeling nothing but, but total emptiness and just really wanting to find the quickest way out the door. All for what? A couple hours of time. Or we could end up dating. And then after a few months, Good months where our feet never touch the floor. <laughs> Maybe we don't want to invest in this, you know? How much do we want to invest in this thing that's taken time away from meeting someone else? Maybe I decide that I want to move on. Well, only to realize, of course, that, oh no, that was really great. Or maybe I'm the one agonizing <laughs> over my exit strategy because I'm, I'm somehow riddled with all this guilt over telling you that I'm really sorry, but this isn't going to happen after all. Oh, so I'm left there wondering, <laughs> did I mismanage my emotions when I was with you? <laughs> if I had done uh, this or that differently, yes. would you have left me? The pining is the fucking worst. <laughs> it's true. It's pretty fucking awful. Yeah. So why not just Stick yourself in a foxhole with someone we're comfortable with and cares for you, fulfills all your daily needs, even though you're not entirely sure that they're the one. <laughs> wow. You two are clearly meant to be together. <laughs> uh, best of luck to both of you, you. on that tragic journey. <laughs> Rebecca, how about you? Ah. Uh, well, um, it's complicated. Oh, sure. It's all complicated, right? To 
be honest, um, this morning I signed my divorce papers. <sighs> Sorry to hear that. It's okay. Actually, it feels good to say it. <laughs> I'm divorced. There you go. Yeah. That's why I came down. Just give her some support when she officially closed the chapter. Look at the sunset, have a drink, <laughs> think about a new chapter. Come on. Here, new beginning. Cheers. What about you, Wes? Um, well, I'm married. Uh, we have a baby girl. She's actually, she's almost two now. How long have you been married? Uh, going on seven years. Though, most days it feels like a little longer. So, I hear you. Sharing your life is complicated. Let's get some air. Yeah. A little walk around Carmel. Did I bring us down that much? A little bit, <laughs> yeah. Where are you guys staying? Uh, we don't have a hotel yet. Oh, well then you're staying with her. Oh no. We'll yeah, come on. Us. No, stay with us. <laughs> She's got a full bar of wine for days. You gotta help this divorcee who doesn't want to go to sleep yet. We're grown men. We can handle ourselves. Uh -uh. You're staying. No, the two of you should stay with us. It's a it's fine. Plenty of room. Were you ever married? No. Almost. But then. Almost. What happened? He wanted kids. Wait, and you didn't? No. Wow. I'm sorry, are we in 1952 and I need to put on my little apron and do some vacuuming around the house? I'm, I'm sorry, I guess I just, I guess I just have this idea that deep down every woman wants to be a mother and raise a family. No, not me. How old are your kids? Jesse's 11 and Caroline is nine. How often do they see their dad? Every other weekend. We'll share custody. He's up in Palo Alto. How's that been? Um, you can't prepare for this kind of stuff. Did I trade getting married for living a life of my own? Sure. But, you know, he's married now, he has his kids. I don't regret my path at all. Definitely not boring, I'll tell you that. That's kind of the point. Isn't it? All right, big question for Luke. Tell me about this Maggie. What makes her so special? The thing about Maggie. Oh, yeah, no. I'm not allowed. <laughs> I want Luke to say it. Yeah, come on, give a uh, newly divorced mom a little hope. All right. Um, the first time I saw her was English class. She was sitting by the window as the sun was piercing in. You know that classic awe moment, right? But there was an innocence about her that just struck me. And for whatever mystical reason, from that moment on, she was the, the girl I wanted. I remember I would walk by her on campus, or I'd see her in the cafeteria, or at the library, or a party, and... And the more this happened, the more I began to create this romantic idea of something with her. I, I started to dream of us being together without ever even 
say much more than hello to one another. But the the more I did this, the the harder it was to temper these really intense feelings I had for this girl to a point where I could actually connect with her like a human being and not some angel I built her up to be. But did you actually connect with her? Mm-hmm. The boat. Tell them about the boat. Oh, a boat. What boat? There's a boat. <laughs> <laughs> my senior week, right before graduation, my parents had this bay house in Virginia, and I invited all these people from school to drive out there and crash for a few days. And somehow Maggie and her friends heard about it, and surprisingly, they showed up. No, not surprisingly. They knew this was Luke's last chance. Will you get to the boat part, please? <laughs> so, one afternoon, everyone was hanging out by the pool, and uh, she came up to me, and asked if I would take her for a boat ride. I wanted every day to feel like that boat ride. I remember we docked the boat on this little man-made beach, and we just sat there for hours and made up for all the lost time. We talked about our future, our dreams, just what we wanted out of life. And for those couple hours, she, she made me feel all this hope, like anything was possible. And then, I know it sounds crazy, but all these dreams of love and marriage flooded my mind. It was like I could look across at this girl I barely knew and I could see my wife now ladies that is the guy I know <laughs> but what happened between you anything um no. <laughs> what? I had my chance, but uh, I was too afraid to ruin this perfect moment. So that night, she and her friends left. And uh, graduation came. She moved to Europe, and I never saw her again. Didn't you go after her? I mean, you loved her. We loved her. No, I didn't love her. I mean, uh, I was infatuated. And I, I might have felt in love, but... No, see? But... Those feelings, that story you just told, that's all part of being in love. Those are just feelings. It's not love. You two made it perfectly clear tonight that love is... is not something you... you create in your mind. It's not a fairy tale. It's a... it's a lot more complicated than that. Oh, hang on. Oh, let me tell you something, Luke. If you think it's all worth it without the fairy tale, at least at some point in the relationship, then you're wrong. Maybe me signing those papers today is just more proof that this whole idea of marriage is a myth. But the fairy tale that I had with that man in those first two years, it's the only reason we made it through another 15. I mean, to tell you the truth, those moments that you described, they still happen. They're just tinier fragments of a life that just becomes bigger than the both of you. But it is those moments, Luke, that ground you, they anchor you in life. And no matter how far you sail away through all the pettiness, you need that stuff to bring you back to the why of it all, to help you with the myth. Because without it, there's nothing. Love is not some form of practicality, and you know that. It's 
You should go. You should go find her. I don't care how silly it is. Just open your heart back up to the possibility of something. Did you owe yourself that? To Portland. To Portland. That would be good for you. If it doesn't work out, you can always find me in Berkeley. I know this isn't exactly what you had in mind, but thank you. Don't go. Look, Wes, I appreciate everything you've done, and I feel better. I really do. Just stay, please. It's not just you who needs this. I have to do this, man. I'm sorry. Fine, well, you're running late, so go. Go. Thank you for everything. Walking into this meeting now, figured I'd give you a quick ring. You ready? Um, well, I actually have some nerves. You nervous about a deal? It's a complicated one. I'm sure you'll do fine. People gravitate towards you. How's everything at home? How's our girl? She's fine. She won't stop moving, but that's nothing new. She got that from her mom. She certainly did. Let me know how it goes. Yeah, I will. Love you. I love you too. Nice. Wes, take care. Yep. Take care. Can I talk with you in my office? Mm. Oh, I missed you. Oh my God, I'm so glad it's the weekend. I have so many places I want to show you. But first, I've got his dinner reservations at this new spot. Uh, but then there's this amazing overlook I found near my apartment, so we have to go do that. Uh, but there's also okay, this... Okay, um, just... Slow down. Wes, what's wrong? You're a coward. 
Come on. You don't want to start a life with a guy who would have an ex-wife and a child. I don't care about that. I love you. I do, but I don't want that for you. Don't do that. Don't make this about me. I know what I want. I want you, and you want me to, so don't make this about me. Why can't you do this for yourself? Why are you so afraid to be happy? I never want to see you again. I forget I ever knew you.
haven't said a word in like five hours. Just work stuff. It's the alternator. Why don't we uh, get this thing into town and get it fixed up first thing in the morning? You know a good shop. Where are you guys heading? North. Closest hotel at this point. Closest hotel. All right, well, I know a funky little spot. This place is kind of spooky. All right, well, sorry it's not the chateau, Mr. Hollywood, but we'll have to do. You've been carrying all this cash around this whole time? Yep. Been a cash only kind of trip. I needed. Been a long day. Are you visiting? Our car broke down, so we're just just staying the night. Oh, that's a shame. Well, it'll be ready in the morning. So. I'm Charles. Hi, Deidre. Sage. Sage, Deidre. Here, let me get those. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Oh, sorry. This is my business partner, Gary. Gary. <laughs> what kind of business? Uh, oil business. Yeah, we are. Uh, we're up here searching for some new prospects. You drilling? <laughs> sorry. We are drilling. <laughs> Why don't you join us for a drink when you're done with your dinner? You too, Gary. Are you for real? Again? <laughs> you're on fucking believable, man. Our car's gonna be ready in the morning. Can we just sleep? No one's forcing you to stay out and play. Come on, Wes. I'm here now for the end game. You got me. I'm in. We don't need any more detours. Yeah, you don't need any more detours. But... Uh -oh. Just be quiet. Let me do what I'm going to do. That's not even a detour. That's just, that's just a wrong turn. Go to bed.
Gary thinks you're an asshole. moment anytime I don't know if it's my DNA or something I picked up from my daddy's homie porn videos what what the fuck are you talking about my daddy's fucked up <laughs> when I was 12 I found this old VHS tape in his bedroom of course I was curious but I watched mm. it and I saw my stepmom in this old lit dark Getting fucked by a bunch of men in gorilla masks. Because I was behind the camera. Daddy. <laughs> there you go. There's enough daddy porn video talk. Let's make our own video. Yeah. You make a video, Charlie. God, I have too much clothes on. Oh, I'm gonna always close up for a video. Where's your phone? Yeah. Oh, oh look at it. Oil man's ass. That's a fucked up story. <laughs> Should be okay, but uh, I get a proper check once there. My wife will get you squared away. Oh, yeah, I'll have your bill in a sec. Hey, babe. You good? Yeah. So, where's the. Uh... Alternator? Yes. And then the yes. And the filter. That's right. Okay, love you. Um, I'll put the key in the, in the Bronco. Thanks. Hey, uh, Rex, I'll follow you out. I got a quick question. So, um,. Why don't you put a fan on? How long has it been? Hmm. Oh. 
51 years. Well, what's the secret? Oh. <laughs> There's been a lot of life since that photo. A lot of change. But with all that change, I guess it's about always working to find each other in the end. It's beautiful. Thank you. All right. What's the damage? Oh, uh, yeah. It's not too bad. Hey. Sorry, um, I, I've got some money in the car. I'll be back. I might finally have some reception. Sarah called me. Was your wife calling me, Wes? She left me a message. D do not listen to that voicemail. No, wait, she left me four fucking messages. Why, why do I have four fucking messages from your wife, Wes? Dude, just give me the phone. 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 What happened in San Francisco, Wes? You've been fucking dark ever since. Something happened. The man with all the answers. And the one time I actually asked for one, you will give it to me. Just be honest. <laughs> I was having a fucking affair. Okay? I fell in love with a woman from work. Are you happy now? But I ended it. I ended it. Because no matter how much I love her, I don't want to ruin my family. But I did not sleep with those women last night. They robbed me, okay? That's why I'm freaking out right now. They took my credit cards, my Amex cards, and Sarah has access to my Amex cards, and I'm sure she's seen the fraud charges and knows something's up. You're right. I'm supposed to have all the answers. You're the one guy that knows I don't. Why didn't you tell me about it before? You wouldn't answer the phone.
Eventually, our boss got wind of the affair. And he couldn't allow things to move forward the way they were going. But he needed us both. Thank God. So he had Jennifer take over the San Francisco office. Left me in DC. And um, for the past year, I've been living a double life with a woman across the country. I should have picked up the phone. No, man, it's okay. No, no, I sh should have been there for you. I'm sorry. You're here now. <sighs> I don't know what I'm doing. Fuck. I don't know. Wes, look, man. I don't have a clue about marriage. I don't know what it's like. I'm just some single dude who's spent the majority of his adult life alone. So, who am I to give you advice, right? Fuck, you can't lie your way through the rest of your life. What's the point? This is gonna hurt people. People important to you. So just... Just make a choice. And stick with it. We are ready to begin security screening for flight 310 with service to Sacramento. At this time, if you'll gather your personal items and have your boarding pass and your photo ID out and available for myself and the GSA agents when you get to the checkpoint. It's fun, buddy. What am I supposed to do with the Bronco? Keep it. Come here. And I don't need to tell you what to do with it. You're 10 miles from Oregon. Come on, Wes. The Maggie thing is real. She asked about you. Look, you're right. I had to lie to get a little freedom for myself and I hurt some people, but you don't have to lie. And right now you're only hurting yourself. Get on your plane. Go home. You know what to do with that Bronco. chance second voicemail i don't know where you are i don't know what's going on i don't know what you're doing but you got to get on that airplane man remember i put myself out there for this so don't screw me up.
buddy. You want to make a quick 20 bucks?